So about a year ago, almost to the day, I actually started work on a new project making a couple of stone pillars or columns for my studio uh, for the game collection and stuff. And I think that they came out really amazingly. And I recorded steps all along the way about how to do this. And I thought I had actually lost the footage, but as I was uh, cleaning out my, my phone camera, uh, my camera phone, whatever, uh, I actually found a lot of the footage that I had been using up to that point. Um, some of it's not the greatest, but I hope that you guys will think that this is a, a pretty cool project. And maybe if you feel like taking your game room to the next level by incorporating some faux stone facade stuff uh, on the cheap, I think this project only cost me, honestly, probably sub $100, I think. Um, and if you have a long weekend or just a lot of extra time on your hands, you know, for various reasons right now, uh, this could definitely be something to uh, explore inner creativity. One of the things I was actually thinking about doing at some point would be making a stone like Triforce or something that that I could use as a pedestal to hold my master sword. Anyways, this there's like no limit to the ways that you can apply these uh, techniques. So give this a video a watch. And if you have questions, I still remember mostly how I did it all. <laughs> if you have questions, let me know down in the comments down below. The one thing that I really, really have been wanting is to make my collection series feel more fantasy, a little less tech. Um, I, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love tech. But um, I always felt like my show didn't reflect the fantasy nature of role-playing games. So uh, one of the things that I really want to incorporate is like a nice rock wall. And I've seen a lot, I've been watching a lot, a lot of tutorials on... Uh, making rock facades and rock props, and I think I've got to figure it out how I want to go about doing things. So uh, I went to Home Depot, and this is a garage. It's not mine. <laughs> it's full of other stuff uh, that is not mine. So um, yeah, this is this is a garage that I've borrowed, <laughs> but it has lots of tools that I'll probably be putting to use. Some better than others. Anyways, so I went to Home Depot, and and I picked this up. Uh, this is, or actually it's it's from Menards. It's uh, basically a garage ins, uh, insulation kit, uh, which is consists of eight of these panels. It was like $36. I should have paid more attention because I did not realize that it had this, uh, this like uh, foil backing on it, um, which might work to my advantage down the line, but then on the front, it also has this sort of plastic coating which I don't actually want. I'm not sure if that's going to affect my ability to uh, to work with it. Actually, okay, good. It looks like this will come off. So this might actually work to my advantage. Um, so my, my plan is to make two columns, sort of, out of these uh, eight pieces of styrofoam. I'm going to start by gluing these into two inch thick pieces. I'm probably going to put the foil center uh, in the center and then use a hot knife or, uh, or like a hot uh, wire kit uh, to carve out the stones and the grout and, and make it feel really like chunky and, and real. Um, so that's going to be part one. Uh, so in order to glue these together, I'm going to Go ahead and peel off this uh, this plastic, and then I also went and got this. Uh, this is some this is some really great stuff, guys. <laughs> uh, this is great stuff, expanding foam, uh, and it works as a really good glue to hold other pieces of foam together. So that's going to be what I'm going to use to uh, bind these all together into actual columns. Um, and I guess we'll see how it comes out. I've never done anything like this before. Uh, I've just, I, I've watched a lot of videos on YouTube, so I'm a professional now. No, <laughs> that's not the case. Um, but maybe if, if this inspires you to do something cool like this later on, um, you know, I want to at least document that. So here we go. Uh, oh yeah, also, I'm going to be using some skewers. They're kind of makeshift skewers because I didn't feel like going to the dollar store, but I had some leftover dowel 
that I've sharpened, and I will be using as skewers to kind of hold these things together while this cures, which should be pretty quick. You know that feeling when you get a brand new piece of electronic equipment? You gotta take the peel off. This is not quite like that. I have peeled half of the clear plastic pieces off and I've got a uh, still coated one. I'm gonna see if I can keep the, the foil sides together. Uh, hopefully what's gonna happen here is I can use the foil to sort of keep the hot knife from getting in too far uh, because the hot knife or the hot wire can only cut through foam. It won't even cut through paper. So it definitely won't cut through that foil. So if I have a foil center, I feel like uh, that will go a long way toward uh, helping it keep kind of consistent. Although on the other hand, that also might end up um, making my cuts look too shallow. I don't think I don't think I'm gonna have the rocks stick out more than a, a full inch though. Okay, so it should be okay to have a foil center. So I'm gonna see if I can glue foil to foil using great stuff. So one done. I, I'm, I'm leaving the foil backing on. I'm gonna find out first. I'm gonna do a test to find out if I can actually seal them with this foil center or not. But one thing that I have noticed as I've been taking this off, because this has to come off for the hot knife to work, but one of the things about this that I've noticed that I really need to tell you guys is that, uh, you know, taking this stuff off is quite appealing. <laughs> Always wear gloves and protect eyewear. Okay. Well, uh, I have both of those things right now, so. All right, now I need to wait for that to get a little tacky. So they say to get the blue great stuff for uh, windows and doors because this is what um, doesn't over expand. It doesn't expand too much, which makes it better as a glue. We'll just try to sandwich. There we go. Just. Make that a forbidden sandwich. <sighs> they say to put the skewers in at odd angles. <sighs> Shooting and doing this one-handed isn't easy, but essentially, yeah, here's what I'm doing. That should do it. We'll just give that some time to cure. Like maybe a half hour. So I've now got a two inch thick piece of foam. And I've got skewers going all the way through it at odd and irregular uh, angles with the intention that this foam, this great stuff, will hopefully it'll bind those two together. Because if not, I'm going to have to peel a lot more. <laughs> but we'll give this a shot. In this next scene, I'm talking about how I couldn't yet find a hot wire cutter of my own. Uh, but for some reason, the beginning of that footage got cut off. So here's that explanation and here's the rest wire cutter yet so I'm gonna see if I can try to build one. Uh, I think I'm gonna see if I can find some wire. I got this little bit of PVC here. I don't know what, exactly what size but maybe I can bend it over into some sort of like bow shape uh, with a little bit of heat and then attach a thin wire and uh, like a 12 volt AC adapter or something. Uh, maybe some speaker wire will be involved. Uh, I'm gonna try this out. <laughs> Wish me luck. Okay so I just finished song this last piece into four pieces because I decided that uh, uh, this would be a better 
size of a wall like this to have it sort of that thickness. So I'm going to make it into L shapes, kind of like this. Um, so I sawed it down to size. I'm going to use some great stuff to stick it together. I already did a little bit of foam cutting here with a improvised foam cutting tool. I'll show you guys more of later. Um, so I'm going to use some great stuff in between the seam here. Use some skewers to secure it. And hopefully, hopefully this will turn out to be a, uh, a really cool looking pillar. A um, couple notes. I hope you have a shop vac if you're going to use a saw like I did here. Because it gets dust styrofoam dust everywhere and uh, and it gets on on you pretty bad <laughs> okay so here I'll go ahead and show you this right now this is my improvised uh, cutting tool and it is very cheaply made this is speaker wire PVC I've bent to shape using a little bit of heat so it's discolored a couple of uh, wood screws on the end here down inside. I don't know if you can see that. Probably not. There you go. Um, I've got the speaker wire connected to the screws here. And then through some trial and error, I found that if I connect it to this, this is a 5 volt 1.5 amp AC adapter. If I do that, this will not burn out the coil. By the way, that heat coil came from this broken um, hair dryer. Flat irons don't have that. <laughs> so this broken hair dryer though, it comes out, there's this coil and it contains a bunch of this very special wire called nickel chromium or nichrome wire. And it's basically the heating element that you see in space heaters and hair dryers and in like um, toasters and stuff. So this was 250 at Goodwill and I got it half off. So um, this is a good source. I also have some straighter stuff on the way, but this is perfect for cutting the grout lines. I've given it some depth now on the sides with some of that great stuff. And I've done it twice. I think in hindsight, I would have done this piece much more like this piece where I've got where I've got it segmented so that like you see it's here and then on the side it cuts there instead of the line all the way across. I did this one first and I realized this way would be probably a lot better structurally speaking. So I think that either way they'll both be fine, but yeah. I like that more. I also went to town a little bit further on this uh, on this stone pillar and it's starting to sort of take shape. And I am really, really excited. Oh yeah. Um, once I've got the grout all carved out, then I'm gonna start giving the stones more shape. And uh, yeah, this is gonna be really cool. It's gonna look really good on film, I think. I do need to still probably go back and fill in some of these cracks because that's not perfect, but it's not bad. It, it could be a lot worse. Like this is kind of bad, but I feel like once I start carving into it more, it's going to start looking a lot better. And uh, here's the, the back side for, for reference. I got some actual skewers now and went to town. So this is all curing at the same time instead of piece by piece. So yeah, gonna wait for that to cure. But while it cures, I'll probably start doing more uh, hot wire foam cutting into that grout to really get that to pop out. Yeah, this is gonna look really good. All right, so right now I am carving. Um, I've actually been carving quite a bit here. You can probably see some of this mess. This is a very messy process, um, but I wanna show you something really, 
really cool. So, uh, here's how I've been kind of doing things. Um, so I've kind of been using my cutting tool here. I've been making some modifications as I go. Um, I've been carving out, like, the grout lines. And, and that looks okay, because it kind of looks like this down here. Which, yeah, I think that looks okay, but it's it could be a lot better, right? So, um, after that, what I do is I've been going over here. So this is something that I ended up having to make myself because I couldn't find one locally. But they do sell these on Amazon, so I'm going to go ahead and put a link in the description below. Uh, that's, I guess, one of the things that you will probably want to go look for if you want to do some foam crafting like this. Uh, this one that I made works pretty nice, but I believe that the store-bought ones are probably going to be a little higher quality and won't come with that zigzag wavy pattern, even though I think it might have worked out to my favor in this case. So it's pretty late now. Uh, here's what I have done so far for the first pillar, and then here's what I've got done for the second pillar. I think that's really coming out quite nicely. Oh. Now that's what I call a pillar. <laughs> uh, not bad for styrofoam and an entire couple of days of work. But it actually went surprisingly quickly. And uh, I, I'm going to be sanding it later on. I don't know if this comes through, but it looks, you know, you can see the, the waviness of the, the carving tool. I've got the two pillars here, as you can see, pretty much ready. I've got them sitting on a couple of, a couple of things like that, a couple of benches. And, uh, you know, I'm still not quite as proud of the way this one came out as I am of the first. But the more I've been looking at things, the more I realize the less of that detail is really going to matter in the end once this mortar mix is applied. So, um, yeah. So, anyways, here is that uh, mortar mix that I got. That flex bond. Going to be sifting some of that into a cup to get rid of a lot of the... Uh, a lot of the, you know, clumps and stuff. Got a couple of cups, one for my bucket of water, one for the flex bond to, uh, you know, to pour it in here. Then I'll be mixing it up in here. And I don't know, I might use some of this, I might use some of this. I haven't really got a perfect formula worked out, but uh, I think maybe once I do, I'll show you guys some of it in action. So this is what it looks like after just a single coat of this mortar mix. And uh, I'm doing the voiceover here because what I was saying on camera during this part was actually kind of asinine and <laughs> wasn't moving along very quickly. But uh, I did want to take this as an opportunity to say that I wanted to thank the, uh, the guys over at Hollywood Haunter who were a huge invaluable resource in helping me learn how to do a lot of these things. Um, so definitely check out their channel if you're looking for more information on how to do this sort of thing. So we add a little bit of water first to keep stuff from curing to the bottom and being unable to be mixed in. Add a little bit of this. Go grab the uh, stir stick you forgot. That's really watery. pretty watery. Pretty thick. Mm 
pretty watery again. Still kind of watery. A little bit of water seems to go a long way. There. I feel like that's about that consistency I want. Again, not sure how well you can see that because of the, the contrast. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like gravy, right? All right, not sure how well you can see this because I can't see very well on my phone, but you know, that's about the, the consistency that I like it. My last batch was a little thicker than I prefer and it got kind of hard to to stir and hard to put on. Uh, so once you got it to about this consistency, brush. Okay, and I'm just gonna make that happy little rock there. And, and we're just doing this the entire way down. You can see down there, it's starting to lighten already. The grout lines are actually kind of tough to, to really do, ironically. It's kind of hard to get the brush deep in there to, to get full coverage. Not entirely sure how I'm gonna address that later. Probably, probably gonna involve just pouring mixture into the cracks later on, maybe. But, uh, but for now, this is good. And as that dries, you can see it's kind of becoming more of like a, a normal concrete mixture color, which is exactly what I'm aiming for. So that's just perfect for me, uh, at least for now, because we will be painting this later. Yeah, and the thinner that this is, the easier it is to get into all those cracks for coverage, but then the thinner the overall application is and the less overall strength you get so you know you you probably can infer that just based on the way that things work in this world but you know what else am I supposed to say while I'm painting styrofoam with concrete <laughs> Okay, the first coat is done, and yeah, it, there are definitely a lot of white spots that did not get covered. So this is definitely going to be a, a multi-part job, probably three or four coats, because some of this, you know, I, I can I can feel the texture, but it it still doesn't have that uh, you know hardness to it that I would expect. It has a little bit of give. This is flex bond, <laughs> uh, so it it is intended to be flexible. So there will always be a little bit of give, but uh, but I definitely want it to feel more like I'm you know touching stone. It's got a it's got a sandy texture now. Oh yeah, I haven't done down here yet. It's got a sandy texture on the dry parts. Just need to build that up over several more layers to build up some strength. And yeah, there are 
there are petals <laughs> falling from trees around here. Um, probably not really going to be a big problem though. Honestly, like I, I was even before this, I was considering getting some like hemp rope and grabbing some strands from it, cutting it up, mixing it into the uh, the mortar mix to reinforce some of that strength by adding some fiber into it. But I I decided that was more work than I really wanted to do, and it would take a lot more coats without that stuff in it before that texture would be fully covered up anyway, so. Um, so in order, or in order to maintain more detail, uh, I went with just the, uh, the flex bond. So, you know, this is the after slash still drying, and this is the before. Quite a big difference. And, and I honestly, I can't wait for this to be done. <laughs> it's it takes a lot of wrist strength and also my hands are all ugh, drying out and stuff from the cement yeah it's not a good feeling but I'll probably be at this for a good portion of the day so at this point in production I was rocking out to some flock of seagulls on my stereo and uh Basically, I just didn't want to get flagged on YouTube, so I'm doing this voiceover again some more. And what I'm doing here is letting you know that this is after several coats, and you can, like, knock on this. It feels really solid. Uh, it's, it feels, like, like, hollow, but it's got, like, a really hard surface, which is exactly the point of doing a, a hard coat like this. Uh, now, there's these seams that I was pointing at here a little bit ago, and what I did to help kind of obscure some of those seams was I mixed up some of this mortar mix really thick kind of like peanut butter and just slathered it over the side and tried to kind of go over it uh, you can still see the seam quite a bit here but we do end up fixing that quite a bit later on during the painting process but uh, yeah that's that's one of the things that you're going to want to look out for uh, when if you do this is to make sure you carve into your seams more and try to hide that seam a little bit better than I did but then again I don't think anybody's ever pointed out having seams on my rock walls, so your mileage may vary. Shouldn't have done that. Uh, yeah, so I obviously had to take a, a shower after after all of all of that, all the, the the concrete mix and everything just got everywhere. These, these pillars, these columns, whatever they are, they look so good. <sighs> Even if I don't. Anyways, I am dead. My arm, actually, I'm going to switch arms because I can't because my camera's... Uh, uh, okay, there. Okay. My arms are so dead. The next thing I'm gonna do, cause this is not the end. Cause this just looks like a concrete wall that happens to look like stones. But it doesn't look like individual stones that were mortared together, does it? No, no it doesn't. And that's the problem. So, tomorrow we're gonna paint them with uh, with acrylic paint. Here's an Easter egg just for the people who are watching this. We got ourselves a slime in the wall. <laughs> just so you know, an RPG nerd made these walls or these pillars. Feels like a stone right there. Like, ah, uh, er. Uh. Uh, <laughs> if it wasn't so light, then I would think it was an actual wall. <laughs> for reference, for those who want to follow in my footsteps, I started at about 9 a.m. on a Saturday with, uh, with painting these with 
that flex bond mortar mix and it took until about 6 p.m. between all the layers and letting it cure I uh, I do have some drips here this side is going to be up against a wall so you won't actually see that um, and just and even even after all of the coats there's still going to be a couple things here or there that show through but hopefully the painting process will take care of the vast majority of that it's now been an evening later of curing and these these are hard as a rock which is perfect they uh, unfortunately are still just basically concrete color and I don't want that um, yeah so we're gonna start by kind of making it all black and we're gonna do it with little vial of black uh, acrylic paint and spray bottle so uh, I'll show you how I'm gonna do this so just like this that's probably enough then screw this cap on it much harder process when you have one hand holding your your phone and you can't really see inside very well so there we go let's let's see how this looks I especially want to get it in all the grout lines here like that. This is going to give it that nice old, not entirely black, but uh, darker than light gray, darker than concrete look. You know, and some of this dripping is going to be okay. It's probably a higher concentration of black than I want in that specific spot. But, uh, it'll be alright. Rocks are not uniform. And, you know, you get drips and stuff on, on, uh, on walls. Especially old walls. See if I don't squirt it as hard, I can get higher concentrations of the pigment. Especially if I'm getting close. And the reason I'm doing this with a spray bottle is that I can do it far, far more quickly than if I was going to do this by brush. Now that little bottle of acrylic that I used was like a buck fifty. So if this isn't enough to get the desired outcome, then I can always go get another one. Except, not necessarily today, because today is Easter. But you know what I mean. My hands <laughs> are so sore that actually doing this actually, actually hurts a little bit in my forearm from all the, the painting and stuff I did yesterday. You know, it definitely... Uh, 
definitely hitting me harder than I thought it would. And of course I'm doing this over a drip mat. So if you're in a garage, I recommend you do the same. We still got a bit of this left. How about hitting these corners a little, a little more? Maybe get some nice concentrated sprays on here. Yeah, and let's go ahead and just make that run. Give us some happy little, happy little grout lines. Now I could probably do this with spray paint, but this was a lot cheaper and I can more easily do this than with spray paint. You know, no chemicals in the, or rather no aerosol. Kind of hard to see. <laughs> there we go. It's a lot better than it was. Lot, lot, lot darker. And some of this is gonna lighten up also over time because, I mean, obviously concrete and stuff gets darker when you get it wet, so. Yeah. So I'll show you what that looks like once it's done curing. So after giving that time to dry, that is the difference between the two halves. And that's the first coating. And I think we can do that a few more times and, and really start to darken that up. I know what you're thinking. That's really dark. How is the camera gonna pick up all that detail that we just put into our stone columns? And you are correct. This is really dark. It looks lighter or darker depending on my phone because my phone is crappy. But essentially, the reason we're adding all the dark now is because this is the darkest we're gonna get it. And I really want, like right in there and up here, I really want that really nice and dark because that's gonna be the aged grout. And then we're gonna start building on some lightness onto this and some color. So we gotta get this dark first to build up to light. Otherwise, we're gonna miss out on a lot of the, the detail, some of the, the, uh, the layers that we're gonna be adding onto these. So, yeah, a few more layers, we're gonna get this thing really dark. And then, uh, and then I got some special tools that I'll show you guys for how we're gonna lighten this baby up and, and get it looking really, really good. So at this point, I was listening to more K-Rock <laughs> on my stereo and, uh, well, point is, I can't have you listening in on that audio right now, but what we're doing here basically is with a bit of a dry brush here with that foam brush we're going over with just a little bit of paint, but hitting it pretty hard on the, the rock wall to kind of start building up some layers of color. I was aiming for some bronzes, some blues and stuff to kind of give it maybe a little bit of like a, you know, some minerals are in these stones, maybe some sort of ore or something. I, I don't know, but I wanted to give them some sort of color and not just be boring old gray so this is just the first step that we're going through and adding more uh more depth to these rocks a little while later i was jamming out to some iron maiden in the background so i'm doing more voiceover here as well and what i'm covering here is how i'm layering up additional colors and also how there was a lot of drippage earlier from using the spray bottle method and that was something that really shows initially all the drips and stuff on the first piece of the first wall. However, once I started going over that wall with more of these colors and stuff, the less those drips actually came through. You can see these are really drippy looking walls, right? But the other one looked exactly like this before painting, but I added some additional paint and now it's not even a problem anymore. 
And here they are. It's a lot of work. A whole lot of work. But man, I think these things just came out so, so well. Especially up close. I think from far away, maybe they're a little too uh, homogenous. Maybe. But, I don't know, maybe they were all dug from the same quarry, I don't know. Sure, that's, that's the story, I'll, and I'm sticking to it. <sighs> so, yeah, I feel like it would have been nice if I could have made these all from the same batch of paint, made them a little more consistent. This one, especially on camera, looks a lot more blue than I uh, than I would have preferred. But I don't think they look bad. Yeah. Hell, I think they look pretty good for a first try. And I can always do more to them later if I really feel like it. So. Um... I'm gonna go ahead and install these downstairs here pretty soon, and then we'll see how they look. And also, I think that, especially since they're side by side, they look really different, but when I bring them downstairs, they're gonna be on opposite sides of the room. So, you most likely won't even see them both in the same shot, so I don't think it will really be a big problem. So. So as it turns out, it looks like I was completely justified in thinking nobody was ever going to call me out on my asymmetrical pillars. So uh, I'm just so, still so happy with the way that these came out. And this is a skill I, I haven't used in a year, but I can't really wait to put this to use on something else. It really, all told, wasn't very expensive and wasn't all that hard either. It's a very open-ended sort of thing. It's not like... It's not an exact science, it's an art, and that means you can't really mess it up all that badly. But hey, if you have questions, let me know in the comments down below.